guys and welcome back to another episode. So patch 8.1 is finally out and that means new guides and we are going to get a lot of new guides but let's start first with restoration shamans. So what can you expect in this guide? Well the first thing you can expect is changes from 8.0 to 8.1 so what is the big changes from last patch to this patch? After that we will go through the stat priorities, we will go through the builds and talents, we will go through Azerite traits and rotation. So changes, stats, builds and talents, Azerite traits and rotation. That's five things. So after these five things you should be able to handle and use very, you can say, carefully. Restoration shamans in patch 8.1. So let's go through all these five topics and see what we can get. So topic one will be changes from 8.0 to 8.1. So the first change is your capacitator totem and your earthbind totem is actually having more yards now. So you can actually now use them up to 40 yards away. That means you can cast your totems, capacitator and earthbind totem way far than before. So that means you can easier crowd control or stun a groups of enemies that you could before. Number two in those changes is your chain heal. Before it only healed 105 persons of your normal chain heal, so of your spell power, sorry. So 105 of your normal spell power, but now it heals 140. That's a very big boost that we got for chain heal. But what they have nerfed on it is instead of healing standard five targets it only heals four targets now so it only heals four but it heals way more and i would personally say that's a big boost because i normally never need to heal five persons at one time i just need to heal two three or four and that's exactly what chain heal now does and it heals so much more the next one is high tide that's one of our talents on the level 100 row it is totally changed, so it's not nothing at all as it was before. Now it gives you a passive, so for every 40,000 mana you spend, the next two chain heals you cast will heal 20% additional, and it will not reduce on healing for each jump. So that means, well, right now it heals 11,000, and then plus it with 20 persons, and then it will heal all the four ta targets with that healing, and it will not reduce. That means you can basically full heal a group on two healings and that is amazing. The last change from 8.1, sorry 8.0 to 8.1 is Unleash Life. Instead of healing 110% of your spell power, it now heals 130% of your spell power. So that is a boost. But the effect that it gives you, that it increases your healing on your next direct spell, direct healing spell was 45 before but now it's 35 but still the bonus that it got for healing a lot more is really great and they also reduced the mana of it before it was five persons of your base mana now it's only four persons so that was all the changes from 8.0 to 8.1 and to topic number two stat priority so the most important stat for you is of course intellect so if you get the choice between getting a uh, sorry a trinket that has either critical strike or intellect you would always take intellect because intellect is such an important major stat so it's always intellect no matter what and i know that you already have, always have intellect on your shoulders and your feet but if you get a trinket choice Intellect is the best one. After Intellect, it's Critical Strike, and Critical Strike is the most important secondary stat as a Restoration Shaman. So for all sakes, get as much Critical Strike you can, because you really want it. Also, you have a passive spell as um, in Restoration Shamans, and it's called Resurgence, and it actually, you direct heal critical refund a percentage of your maximum mana for one person from healing wave 60 persons from healing surge or riptide 
and 20, 0 0.25 from your chain heal. So one person from healing way, 0 0.60 from healing surge, and 0 0.25 from chain heal. So that means the more crit you do, the more mana you get back. And of course crit also increase the healing you actually give out. So in that case, it's super duper. After the well, intellect and crit, it's basil, what, basil, versatility. I hate that word. Versatility. And versatility is a very flat damage and healing increase. So it will, well, just as critical strike, it just increases your healing output. And Restoration Shaman is very reliable on giving, giving out flat healing. So that's why versatility is really great. After versatility, as number four, haste and mastery is on number four. Both haste and mastery is both pretty great, um, but they cannot come on top as intellect crit of versatility. So haste and mastery will be number four priority. So always get intellect, always get crit, always get versatility, and haste and mastery is the choice you only take if the, you don't if you don't have a choice. Of course, eye level also have something to say, but if it's only an item that is five eye level higher. I will go with the primary stat, or else you can go with the high eye level. It's probably up to you as a person if you want to have high eye level, or if you want to go for your, you can say the stat that will simulate more damage. You can always try go on simulate websites and see if this this ex webs if this item is exactly giving you more damage, or the eye level is better. Because again, intellect is very important. So the more intellect you have, the more healing you also will deal. And we are back on the webcam. So we are now on point three, that is builds and talents. So the first build I'm going to cover is the dungeon build. So are you going to do things with small groups? So you could example also say world quest or something. So small group events or five man dungeons. Well, just with a small group. Then this build is the perfect one for that situation. First of all, we have undulation that I recommend for small groups because in small groups you have time to cast healing wave or healing surge. So you don't really have to spam that much chain heal. Um, and it's a great one for just helping you out. So every time you cast, if I take my, you can see here, if I take my healing wave. So first of all, it will heal 12,000, the next one, 12,000, and then the next one, 80,000. So always the third healing I'm healing with healing wave or healing surge is increased by 50. And it's a really nice one in small groups and I can really recommend it just for, I mean, and still if you will spam heal with healing wave that doesn't really cost any mana, it's great because every third will heal a lot. If you feel like you need some more burst healing, you could always take Unleash Life that is a kind of, you can say, it heals a bit more than Riptide, but also you could take Torrent that increase your Riptide to heal, well, more. But I would say a standard go with Undulation, and you can take Unleash Life if you want to have additional one at instant healing. But I would normally save that for big groups, but I will come back to that. So first of all, small group, well, small group build set, Undulation. Next one, Earth Shield. You don't really need two charges of Riptide or Healing Street Totems for small groups or the Luge because that's Chain Heal. Both these two are very more AoE healing. So Egg of Elements is nice for two Healing Street Totems and two Riptides, but that's most in big group cases. So Earth Shield is the one you want for small groups. So Undulation, Earth Shield. Then also for small dungeons, it's normally mythic dungeons. And so you could say this is also a mythic spec. So static charge is the perfect one for that because you want that additional stun. So of course, it doesn't give you additional stun, you already have to stun, but reduce the cooldown of capitated totem by five seconds for each enemy hit stuns for maximum reduction of 20 seconds. So if it stuns maximum seconds, it's only in 40 seconds cooldown and you can stun again. So that's pretty cool. So again, this one, this one, this one is great for mythic, small groups, or anything like that. The next one 
it's pretty much an ancestral Vigo earthen ball. I would personally take ancestral Vigo. It's much more, you could say, you work, your work, your spell flow is much more easier. It increase, well, you can see a target you heal with healing wave, healing surge, chain heal, a riptide heal um, has increased health by 10 persons for 10 seconds. So, it, I mean, it's great. They get a bigger life pool and they can receive more damage. Earthen wall reduced damage of a group. So if you're like on a boss or on a group where everyone is stacked together, it's also great. Um, but it's much more reliable but that your group is needed to stay together and you have an extra active spell. That's why I think in Rico is a perfect choice for this situation. The next one, Nature's Guardian or Graceful Spirit, is kind of up to you. Graceful Spirit is making so you can use spells while you're walking. It already have two minutes cooldown and with this talent it only has one minute cooldown. Also it makes so you move 20% faster. I feel like this is a, just a goodie bag talent. It's like it only makes your life a little bit easier. I would personally always go with Nature's Guardian because if you get under 35% health, you will get, well, you instantly heal 20% of your maximum health. And that's pretty cool. You instantly heal 20% of your maximum health. And I mean, so you get down to 35 and you get brought up to 55. I mean, what's not to lie on that one? It's pretty cool. The next one is no doubt only flash fluid. So never downpour, never cloud burst, only flash fluid. So when you consume tidal waves, the cast time of your next heal is reduced by 20 persons. That's pretty cool. So tidal waves is either coming from your riptide, you can see here, tidal waves. You also get them from chain heal. And that means when you consume them, you can see here, when you consume tidal waves, the cast time of your next build is reduced by 20%. So you can see here, and now I got it. Reduce the cast time of your next next heal. So flash float is helping you a lot with casting faster and holding up a nice rotation. The last row for your small group build. High tide and ascendance is the one you go with. High tide will be the default one I will take because every third for it's a new talent actually every 40,000 mana you spend your next two chain heals heal additional 20 persons and it doesn't reduce healing with each jump so that means everyone it targets all the four persons that you heal will get the big healing and it will not be reduced I mean in small groups you can kind of heal a full group of just two chain heal boom boom everyone full health so it helps you so much. And Sentence is a nice spell, but again, it's a big cooldown, three minutes. So you use it, and after that, you're done. I mean, then the talent is done, and High Tide will not help you as a passive one. So I would say High Tide is my favorite one, but Ascendant is really nice if you're in a situation where you're like, I'm not able to heal this, I really need to help get help somehow. Then you can say, okay, Let's try Ascendance and see if this can just make this boss easier. So if you have like a boss you really can't kill, Ascendance is going to save your life. So yeah, go with that one if you want. But what you see right now on the screen is the default build I would take for small groups slash mythic dungeons. Then we also have the raid spec. So first of all, I would change to Unleash Life. It gives you additional instead ability, so you can heal someone in your group fast. It also increases the next healing you cast, direct healing, by 35 persons. And that's really nice to use on a chain heal, because then your chain heal heals 35% more. And I mean, if you top it also with high tide, then it's going to heal a lot on 4 persons. So Unleash Life always in raids, so this is the big group, big group set. So Unleash Life, Echo of Elements because you want that extra healing stream totem. So you can pop up two healing stream totems and heal everyone in the raid team. Such a great thing. And also you have two charges of Riptide that give you more reliability on big groups because you can cast now on each life and two Riptides on everyone and two healing stream totems. So on each life and Echo of Elements is great for big groups. 
And the next one I would say Spirit Wolf because you don't need static charge. You, you, you don't, in raid groups, you're not supposed to stun or anything. So just take Spirit Wolf. And if you get, if you need any help or you're close to die, you just go into Spirit Wolf and also Spirit Wolf will decrease the damage you take over time. And if someone heals you full up, you can go out of again and kind of help. So that's much better than a stun. You only need stun in Mythic Dungeons. The next one is again between Ancestral Vigor or Earth and Wall Totem. Do you think it's a boss where everyone is going to stay in the same place? Or if not, Ancestral Vigor is still helping you most. Because Earth and Wall is only helping you if a group of your raid is staying at the same place and it reduces. But if any, everyone does it, it's a great one. If they don't stay in the same place, Ancestral Vigor will win all time. The next one, you can say the next one here is the same as the dungeon set. So Graceful Spirit is a nice one that can help you in movement situations. And Nature's Guardian is going to save you if you're close to die. <laughs> so I would probably personally take Nature's Guardian. The next one is not Flash Flute, it's actually Downpour. So a burst of water, well, a burst of water at target location heals up to 6 injured allies within 12 yards for 10,000. Cooldown increased by 5 for each target effectively healed. So standard, it only has 5 second cooldown, but for each one you heal up to 6 persons, it gets 5 seconds more cooldown. But it heals so much and it heals a lot of, you can say, persons in one area. And it only has 1.3 second cooldown, oh sorry, cast time. So it is a pretty great healing for a Mesa group. I mean, you can see it here, I can use it, target here, and we heal, and boom. It's a pretty great heal for a raid group. You could also take Cloudburst Totem, so instead of healing, well, it will replace your healing stream totem, so instead of healing all a small time, it takes up all the energy that you heal and explodes later on, or release the healing and poof, heal a lot to everyone. I would probably not take it. I like my healing stream totems a lot, so I will take downpour instead. On the next one, ascendance is not at all. You don't use that in raid. You either take high tide or you either take wall spring. And wall spring again is another healing that will heal you a big group. It, it will, well, it kind of, now it disappeared, but it kind of, it creates a, a big surge of water that flows to forward it heals you and everyone in front of you that get healed of it so again downpour world spring is a great healing for healing a lot i mean now i can use my healing rain i can use downpour i can use world spring i can use chain heal basically i have enough spells to only heal everyone in the raid i can just aoe heal all the time without getting out of mana and not all healers can do that so if you want to top on healing meter as a shaman Go with this spec here in the raids and you will be able to heal everyone all the time without getting out of mana. And of course get some more critical strikes so you get more mana back. So this is the raid spec you see here. This is the raid spec. And again we can also go back to the dungeon spec or slash mythic dungeons. So static and it's just little flash fluid here. So here you see it and this is the dungeon spec. So this is the specs that I recommend. And now down to our topic number four, Azerite Trades. So you're probably thinking about what Azerite trade should I have and what is good. And I will now mention the best Azerite trades that you possibly can go after for the most important part in your gear. So first of all, we have the outer ring, the outer ring, you know, the totally outer ring and which one can actually be the, be the best one in those. So first of all, I would say Swirling Sands. Swirling Sands, well, the increase, well, your spells and abilities have a chance to conjure Swirling Sand, increase your critical strike by 400 for 12 seconds. And your critical strike effects extend Swirling Sands by one second up to a maximum of duration of 18. And if you remember what I said, is that critical strike is your most important crit, or well, your most important stat. So that's why Swirling Sands is really great because it gives you critical strike. 
Next one is Blightborn Infusion. And Blightborn's Infusion increase your critical strike also. So your spells and abilities have a chance to draw one new soul from Froze to serve you for 40 seconds. The soul increase your critical strike by 4, 572. So now you're probably thinking, why is Swelling Sands better than Blightborn? Because Swelling Sands can be longer time and Blightborn is on less time, but it of course gives you more critical strike. But again, Swelling Sands and Blightborn are both really good, so if you can get one of them, it will be awesome. The number third one will be Archive of the Items, Titans, and you armor, gather, and analyze combat data every 5 seconds. Increase your primary stat by 7, and it stacks up to 20 times. And of course, it you miss all your stacks when you're out of combat. This one here is only able to get inside, what is it called? It is only able to get inside Uldia. So this trade is a Uldia only trade. So this is the top three, I would say, top T, top T, three Azerite trades in the outer ring. So the ne next one is the middle ring. And let's go through the top three again there. So the top three, I would say, the first one is Concentrated Mending. Your healing effects have a chance to grade, grind the target 8, at eight additional healing every second second for 12 seconds. So that means, okay, it's not 8, but of course it will scale depending on your spell power. But it means all your healings, like Holy Priest, have a chance, well, Holy Priest always does it, but now all your healings have a chance to give additional healing over time. And I mean, that's crazy. So if you cast a chain heal, you have a chance that 4 persons will get healing over time. That is pretty great. Number three is Blessed Potence. Your healing spells have a chance to apply Blessed Potence for 20 seconds. When the ally falls below 50% health, Blessed Potence is consumed and instantly restore 3000 health. That is also really great. So again, you cast Chain Heal on someone, four persons, they all get Blessed Potence, they get under 50% health, and boom, free heal. That is great. The number 3 is Blood Siphon, and it is because it increases your mastery. And I know that mastery was one of your lowest, is your lowest talent stat, but still in the middle ring, it's still better than everything else you pretty much get in there. So, Blood Siphon is nice, and of course it also gives you a leech. I mean, if you have a Flame Dot on the boss, a Flame Shock, it, it heals you for a little bit amount, and it, it can always be nice to have. But you mainly get it because you have mastery. But again, concentrate, blessed, and blood siphon is top three in here. Then we have the inner ring. And the inner ring, I will also go through the top three in there. The first one is impassive visage. When you take damage, you heal for 300, and it only happens every six seconds. That's great in a raid or dungeons. Every time you get damage, you get healing free. You don't have to do anything, you just get healing. Of course, it only helps every six seconds. The next one is Resounding Protection. It gives you a shield every 30 seconds, and if it, you don't use the shield or it's not disabled, it will just refresh the duration by 30 seconds again when 30 seconds is gone. And now you probably say, why is Resounding Protection not better than Impassive? Because Impassive is actually going to heal more than Resounding is going to shield you for over 30 seconds. But again, Resounding is also really nice, and Impassive is also nice, but a passive is the best one, and resounding is just after. The last one is Vampiric Seed. When an enemy you harm dies, you heal for 3000 and gain 83 speed. I know you probably think, okay, why is that even good? But still, if you have been on some trash mobs in dungeons, mythic dungeons, and you simply have casted some dots or Chain, if you made a little chain heal, chain lightning on them, and they all die, well, you get pretty much healing, and you also get speed. So, and again, if you're thinking, why is this really the good one? Well, then it's because it's better <laughs> than the other one you could actually get. So, it's kind of the best. So, these three in the inner ring is the best you can get as as right traits. So, that was the outer ring, middle ring, and inner ring. And that is the Azurite Traits I'm recommending. So, back to the last thing we're going to talk about is the rotation. So, if we first take the single target build, 
well not single target build but small dungeon groups like mythic dungeons or dungeon groups then we have this build here that we got through this builds and what we do here is well as the first thing you have earth shield and of course earth shield put that on your tank so if the tank is getting problems you basically have an earth shield that is ready to heal him it's a really cool one and it helps you and it's really recommended to use in small groups so pop up this earth shield on your tank and he will be happy then you have the talent called undulation so remember every third healing or healing surge is healing for 50 percent more so i mean even though your tank haven't really got any damage you can just begin to cast some small healing waves because healing wave it i mean it basically only takes two persons of your mana and when it's finished healing you have those two persons back and now the third healing i'm, I'm going to do is going to be a healing additional 50 percent so either i can now just wait for using my healing or i can simply use it and then it heals fit with more healing so just have that in mind that you can always bank up to it and kind of use it but undulation is making that you're going to use much more healing surge or healing wave but try to see if you can use as much healing wave as possible because healing surge is eating all your mana and it heals less i know it tell it use less time but then use a riptide first and then healing wave basically have the same cast time as you normally you can say healing surge so really try to get that in and it will help you greatly so i mean healing is kind of hard to tell the rotation for but i can only give tip and tricks you don't really have a rotation that is always one you go to but again if your group is getting damage like aoe damage pop out your healing stream totem it will kind of try to help healing you with small things if everyone is standing in somehow close circle use healing rain and it will heal the area but only if people are standing a bit close if they are spread like all over don't even even think to use mana on healing rain also use chain heal so chain heal, chain heal can actually jump quite long distance and it heals i mean after this patch it heals greatly so if more than two persons in your group receive damage you should begin to use chain heal instead of healing wave or healing surge so if only one or two persons have got damage don't use chain heal but if more than two so that means three four five have received damage then use chain heal and it's a pretty great one now it heals quite a lot also if you're using the talent high tide it when high tide procs you should just get out that chain heal so you can see here if we just get up on all the mana so we can put up high tide come on high tide here we go high tide is now on that means the next two chain heal i will heal with not reduce healing and it heals 20 percent more so it's just about getting out those chain heals and full heal your full group that's pretty great so again, after your healing street totems, use your Riptide. I would say use your Riptide on your tank because then he gets the healing over time effect, and he has he so then he has Earth Shield and he has Riptide healing him over himself. On small trash mobs that can basically heal hold him up, you could also, if you really want to just chill, you could cast a Healing Rain, Riptide, and an Earth Shield. Then he basically. He could survive for a small amount of time if, if it's easy trash mobs or just a little group then you can pretty much just hold him off with that and just sit back and relax and watch if you get in a situation where the tank is pretty close to die first of all think about it. look at him is he going to die or is he not going to die if he's going to die and you have no chance to heal him the first thing you do is use your spirit link totem run to him or you don't have to run to him but if anyone else is close to him use spirit link totem and now everyone in spirit link totem will share the same health pool so that means if the tank has 10 percent life the dps have 100 then they will go together and they probably both have about 50 percent health and then you just you can actually just spam heal 
one of them, and they both will get healed up. So for Spirit Link, no one. That's actually a lot of shamans that don't doesn't use it because they're like, oh, it's a bad one. Why should I ever use it? But it's really great, and I mean, such a great one. It's great, really great. Also, yep. But if he's close to die. And you're like, okay, I can still, I can still fix this without using Spirit Link. Then I would say, put out a Riptide on him, and spam some healing surges, because healing surge is kind of your, uh oh, something is going wrong. So healing surge is like, something is going wrong. Let's spam the hell out of healing surge. The problem is, you can probably see on my mana, it's getting quite fast down, and if you continue to do this more than one, two minutes in combat. Well, then you're kind of, as sorry to say it, but you're kind of going out of mana. So you should try so to not spam healing surge a lot, but healing surge can be really great in situations where I need to heal now. <laughs> if your tank and anyone else is getting such a lot of damage, healing tight totem is going to save you all. Healing tight totem heals everyone and it just heals everyone all the time and it's pretty great i mean it's not the biggest healing it does but it's still healing so you could basically pop out healing stream totem and healing tight totem and it's kind of trying to help you healing everyone and then if anyone is staying close to each other use healing rain and spam out the chain heals and you should be fine with the aoe groups that should be fine. If you require to move while healing, it's not a problem. You can simply use Spirit Walker's Grace, and now I can run around and heal at the same time. So don't ever complain about not being able to heal while moving as a Shaman. We don't have a problem at all with that. It's pretty great. And only has too many cooldown, and if you want less cooldown, you can swap Nature's Guardian with Graceful Spirit. Remember also on trash mobs, you have your capacity totem, so that means you can stun the trash mobs. And also in those, well, how long is it? It's a three second stun. In those three seconds, the tank normally doesn't get damage. So in those three seconds, you can either heal up or just relax and get some mana. So that stun is only going to help yourself. It's not going to help your damage. It's going to help you. So only you, you, you. It's pretty great. For self-surviving, you have what is called Astral Shift. It will, it takes, well, taking 40% less damage for 8 seconds. So if a trash mob is going after you or you're thinking, oh, I'm not going to survive this, pop out Astral Shift and you get 40% less damage. I mean, it should be able to, to help you. And if you're going into dungeons where the mobs is using fear, you have tremor totem, so always look on the mob, okay, he's casting fear, no one is interrupting, okay, quick, tremor totem. And now every time someone fears, the next 10 seconds, it will remove fear, charm, and sleep from any party or raid member. It's such a nice totem if your group doesn't interrupt, I mean, versus fear, charm, and sleep. And if you're in a mythic dungeon and the trash mobs is too hard and you kind of need to help with sheeping, remember you have your hex and you can use hex to sheep and well then you have a list, you can say one less mob you have to think about. You also have purge that remove one magic effects from enemies so that means if they have like a shield that you need to beat down any, any big buff, you can also remove that with using purge. You also have interrupt, so that means you don't. Well, you're actually the only healer in the game that has a, a, a normal interrupt. So if you can see that the mob is going to cast, and you don't really want to waste a tremor towards or anything, you can use your wind shear that only has 12 second cooldown, and you can interrupt. I mean, that's a win-win situation. So 100% do that. 
very important. You have Earth Elemental. Use Earth Elemental in situations where everyone needs help. Earth Elemental cannot aggro to a bosses. It cannot taunt bosses, but trash mobs it can. So if you use, let's say you're on a trash mob in a mythic dungeon, everyone is close to dying, the tank is not going to survive this. Use Earth Elemental, he's going to tank, he's probably going to be alive for maybe 5-10 seconds, and then in those 5-10 seconds you can heal anyone up, and you will be ready to win the Earth Elemental is dead. It's a pretty great win-win situation. The last spell I'm going to talk about now is Bloodlust. Our recommendation is use Bloodlust on first boss and use Bloodlust on last boss in dungeons or mythics because you can easily use it on first boss and still have not enough time before you can say the, uh, the debuff is off 10 minutes after and you should be on last boss there. If you're faster than 10 minutes to go to last boss, you should not use it on first boss. But I don't think I've been doing a dungeon on less than 10 minutes. So if you can do that, that's pretty cool. But still, if you're pretty sure that it will take more than 10 minutes to go to last boss, use Bloodlust on first boss. It will help you so much to just get a faster run. So yeah. So that is pretty much the rotation for a mythic spec or just a normal 5-man spec. If you're playing a spec that is raid, let me just change, boom, boom, boom. So this will be my standard rate. Yep, going to get out my spells. Um, there we go, there we go, there we go, there we go, there we go. There we go. So the only difference here is that you have up here, you have Unleash Life as an extra spell. So it heals 10,000, Riptide heals 7,000, so that means Unleash Life is nice to just get a quick heal. And now the next instant, or not instant, directly heal, heals 35% more. That means you would always use this on Chain Heal in a raid group. Because now Chain Heal deals, oh, heals 30% more. And that's pretty cool because that will heal everyone else that gets hit by the Chain Heal for more. Also, you get Egg of Elementals. That means you can cast two healing streams, totems. And that means you can heal as twice as many on same time in a raid. That's also great. You also get two chances of Riptide. Also great for healing both tanks. So run Riptide on main tank and one Riptide on off tank. We also take Spirit Wolf. That means if you get damaged, you can use Spirit Wolf. Just every time you, the longer time you're inside Spirit Wolf, the less damage you take. So running around and when you don't have aggro anymore, let's say you're in a raid where it's your turn to get damage, you can quickly go into Spirit Wolf and save yourself. Then you have Downpour, and Downpour is actually a pretty nice, pretty nice spell, it heals again for quite a lot in a big area, and the more people it heals, the longer cooldown it has next time, but still, I mean, if you used Healing Rain, you have used Chain Heal, then you can use Downpour, I mean, it's pretty nice. It's instead of using healing wave or chain heal, you pretty much use downpour as your healing because instead of only healing one person, you can now heal six persons. What's not to like? And then of course you have wellspring that has a bit longer cooldown, but it's really nice. It's healing you and everyone in front of you. It's kind of you know creating a wave of uh, water. So that is pretty much the rotation. Um, you should be. Pretty much ready now for healing as a restoration shaman so yeah you should be ready so if i can get back here on uh, the full cam so i can only say thank you guys for watching i hope you enjoyed this guide here um i tried to make some kind of a new normally i make guides where it's only fa face cam and just talking and playing but now I tried this effect with screens and all that. So please leave down a comment. How? What do you think about this type of guide I just made? Is it nice? Is it, is it not good? Did you better like the other style I had? Leave down a comment. What do you think about this guide? And also, well, leave down a comment if you have any questions about Restoration Shamans. And I can only say thanks you guys for watching and have a great day.